<laughs> Let's do this. Gim Goggy, everybody. I'm gonna try something new out. I got this little GoPro to the hand so I can kind of make editing fun, I guess, with another camera. Different, still learning. One of my favorite childhood memories is Halloween. It was a day you could just be anything you wanted to be other than yourself. In my day, there was no store you could go to and buy a really a prefabricated uh, costume. You started to collect things uh, early on in the year if you had an idea. You, you started to think like that somewhere around, you know, July and August, like, I want to create a really cool costume. Now it's, you know, go spend $300 and you can look like a, you know, a dirty cop or you can buy an alien head that, you know, you don't need to do any makeup for. It's easy to take on, easy to take off. It just wasn't like that. I mean, you, you know, sometimes it would take you an hour to get ready before you go out. Just if you were going to be a hobo, you wanted to dirty up, you know, get your face filthy. And, you know, of course, if you were a boy, you would just put real dirt on your face. And growing up and going out, and I just remember, you just couldn't wait to wait for the time that you could go out. And you're like, it's 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. It's whatever time you got out of school. And you're like, yeah, it's time to go. Or if it was a weekend, it was just like, can we go at noon? You get, you know, your, yourself dressed up and go out and, you know, run to each house and uh, gather up as much candy as you could get. You know, back in the 70s and the 80s, you know, there was this big, huge scare of there was going to be stuff in your candy. And I still believe that it was some adult that said, hey, you know how you get the candy away from your kids? Give them candy before they leave and say, here, only eat this, and I have to search your candy when you get back. Well, I think it was a way for them to collect their good stuff that they wanted before they had handed it back to you. I just remember the feelings and the excitement, and there's nothing more than I remember. I would uh, sit on my bed and hear that Halloween music. You know, the beginning of the movie, Halloween? Yeah, that one. Still freaks me out. I, I listened to it last night. Freaked me out. Not freaked me out totally. It's just I still went to sleep. Just one of those... God, he had that right. Just remembering that childhood and... The feelings, you know. Now we go to high school and things are cool and I don't know at what age you stopped going out and collecting candy. Today it seems like they cut you off relatively early in life. I don't know, 10, 11, 12. You're not allowed to trick or treat, I guess, after a certain age now. But I just remember I would trick or treat, I believe until freshman or sophomore year. And I guess then after that, it was just like, all right, let's go to parties. You already got a job so you can kind of buy your own candy. You know, it's just not cool to go out and uh, trick or treat anymore. So, you know, now you're finding girls interesting and you just find a place where you're like, okay, let's go to a party. You know, you used to go to a, a house where somebody's parents weren't home. And you, you would, uh, you know, the cops would show up. And, uh, you know, everybody would blow through the back 
uh, screened in uh, porch and people were just climbing out windows and because you know the cops would come three and five at a time and one would be in the backyard and one would be in the side yard and two would be in the front and you couldn't go to your car that you came in because the cops are sitting out there waiting for you to leave so you kind of had to take off wait until the dust cleared and return back to your car later on that evening and hopefully that the cops aren't sitting there still waiting for you know the moron to come back a lot of times you just had to wait for the next day and then you got into your 20s and you you know you got that badge of approval to drink so you're like all right let's go out yeah, there's a week worth of parties out here and uh, I, I just never got into that. Then you get into your older 20s and into your definitely your 30s. You would uh, have now friends and of course they'd have babies or they're married and you're not married or whatever. And you know, oh we're going to have a, a Halloween party and dress up. and. You know, some people again bought their costume and some people made their costume and some couples made a costume together and uh, then, uh, then you get into your 40s and you just go, yeah, I just want to really stay at home and hand out candy and see what all the other kids are up to nowadays. And that's kind of where I went into when in my late 20s and 30s I would take the holiday off I would take Halloween off and I would uh, take my tape deck outside you know the boom box and play scary music so by like 11 a.m. 12 o'clock I would start breaking stuff out of the garage and start putting it out into the uh, front yard and position my truck like it gone over the curb and you know a couple of years I took I, I took off the tire and jacked it up and put a flashing uh, bulb underneath it and then I'd put a um, what is those things called the smoke uh, smoker uh, fog machine I put one of those underneath it and uh, with the flashing lights and uh, with the uh, the fogger ah looks so good and then of course you take a kayak and put some skeletons on it and uh, you know put put face masks on them and you know I just went ahead and just decorated up but I was one of the houses that I'd probably say seven or eight years and younger years old the kids typically had a hard time walking onto my property, especially after dark. Um, I would have to go out and hand candy to them, but I like that. I like scaring kids because I gave them a, a different sensation in their life, a different feeling. You know, we all feel happy, we all feel sad, but true honest fear, you know, the kid knows, hey, he's going to be fine, my parents are here, nothing's going to go wrong. But he just doesn't know what's going to touch him. His senses are, are alert. And that's probably why I'm so in tune with my sixth sense. It's, I had two older brothers. down here to a location that will actually coincide with my tobacco review. I hand wrote all this stuff down and I just didn't bring it. It is the Nightmare Mansion. Mission, $14, not bad. Location is 2008 Atlantic Avenue. It says open Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. and on. Saturdays and Sundays open from 2 p.m. on. And again, you don't know what time they're gonna close. Uh, on their website, walk, run, crawl, or get dragged through the narrow hallways and ultra dark. <coughs> <coughs>
This is why I don't do voices. The ultra dark corridors of one of the country's top 10 rated haunted attractions. Located on the resort strip of Virginia Beach, Nightmare Mansion brings immersive entertainment and a real life horror movie experience to the beach. Takes takes uh, eight to ten minutes, and yes, there are live actors. Um, they're celebrating their thirty-fourth year, uh, years of screams. Um, it is highly suggested that it's not made for young kids. All right, today on Blake's Pipes, we have Bat with a Hat. And what I always do. Love it. All right, bat with a hat. There you go. Let's see that. Here's the pipe. Bat with a hat. A sweet, burly Virginia and Green River blend that takes, tastes like heaven and is crazy as hell. Oh, by the way, it's made by, it's not made by one I've ever bought from, from before. Uh, F and K Cigar Company. You just move with the times, you know? You just go, okay. I'll just go around to the other side of the building. How does it look? Come on, it's a nice little artistic uh, bat with a hat on. Nice looking. Smell. Um, I don't think it's that bad. It's just it smells like tobacco. Um, it doesn't have like a, a real centered smell that I would say that I love. Taste, I don't really taste anything. Would I smoke it inside? I don't think there's anything offensive with it, but there's also nothing to it where somebody would go, oh, I love that. You could smoke that all the time around here. Um, I don't smell anything. And I know my sniffer's good because I smelled the weed when I, uh, when I got off the bike, and I smelled the weed when the guy rode his bicycle by me. So I know my sniffer's working, but as far as the smell on it, nothing big. Would I buy it again? I don't, I don't see a reason. How does it make me feel? Like I just came out of a horror mansion and want to light up a bowl of tobacco that's about it that's about as much as it makes you feel like other than that there is nothing it's just blah would I suggest it probably not so just kind of wrap up the review bat with a hat I give it two out of five stars I wouldn't give it too much more than that. Um, it's just burly. I don't know what the Green River blend is. I don't know what the crazy as hell part of it is. Uh, maybe I haven't got all the way through the bowl yet. I'm still trying to work on how does it make me feel. It's, 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 it's really blasé. I think if you had a nice strong coffee in the morning, you could smoke it. Uh, if you had a, a good bourbon, maybe, uh, you could drink it while you smoke it. You know what? Today looks like a good surf day. Calm, but you know, a little bit. There you go. Got a little bit of Virginia Beach for you. 
it said medium flavor who knows I'm getting very mild flavor there is no uh, there's no good oomph to any of this it's just tobacco in a bowl you would think that a, a, a tobacco from a cigar company would have some deep notes in it you know like something good eh, it's just burly tobacco and I don't know maybe it's a year old and now it doesn't have the flavor maybe it's just me it's Sunday morning and my taste buds just aren't there yet maybe it's the wrong pipe again I want to make sure that you know that Whatever I say, I'm not a reviewer. I'm just a dude that likes to smoke a pipe. And I found that if I combine my motorcycle and my pipe uh, hobbies, and then I've learned a new hobby, which is video editing. And I go out, I go to a place, go with the tobacco, go with the something that kind of relates with it, and go from there. I don't know. It'll take me uh, about four or five days to probably put this thing together and release it. I'll have a couple more bowls and see. I might put it in the comments like, you know, hey, you know, I smoked it a couple more times. I keep puffing on this thing. <clears throat> it's not getting any better. It's just, it is what it is. Well, I'll talk to you back on the bike. I had to come back. I'm at the bottom of this bowl before I start packing up and, and going. I'm starting to taste a little bit of caramel at the very bottom of the bowl. Very bottom. All right, now I'll see you. I'll talk to you back on the bike. Welcome back. <laughs> so, hopefully you enjoyed seeing Virginia Beach again as if you come here it is open year-round that uh, nightmare mansion it sounds like a, a pretty cool place to come and visit and get uh, a little scared I don't know what the accommodations are for people with disabilities and the reason why I bring that up is it looks like it's all on the second floor so I'm gonna guess there's an elevator they're saying narrow corridors so I'm gonna guess that uh, wheelchairs are probably hard to, uh, to navigate. I just hope we all have a nice Halloween leading up to it, you know, decorating the yard, having family. My favorite candy bar, the Zero candy bar. It's like white chocolate, nougat, caramel, just so darn good you know but I hope that everybody comes together I hope that you get to dress up and be somebody else for the day enjoy the uh, the cooler weather nice cup of hot cider cocoa I'll see you on the next video embrace the suck <laughs> Which lights should I put into a, a video in the future? Virginia Beach, that is on the oceanfront uh, walk, uh, boardwalk, or go to Norfolk Botanical Gardens. Put it down below. Somebody's waking and baking. Every, everywhere I go, there's somebody smoking pot. What's up with that? He's already been over there a hundred times, like literally three or four times. Same section, doing the same thing. Exeter Rider, you can't make this shit up. You like, we're setting up, nobody was around, nobody nothing. All of a sudden you hit go. You got a moron decides to come out here and start playing with an electric blower. 
We got the garbage men coming over here and picking up the things. I I got homeless people all around me. Tastes like heaven, and this is crazy as hell that I'm trying to do this and continue to do this. But I'm gonna make this shit a video. Now I gotta shut up because they're gonna start a car. Uh-oh. I know what that sound is. Dead battery. And I can't help them. This fucking video is gonna suck. Just because I am all over the place. I had to leave over there, coming over here. I'm not perfectly good in my head. I don't know. You know what? I'm not going to say the tobacco didn't suck. Hey, look. Public restrooms. They look really nice. You know, nice place to come in. And Oh, they just are open to the outside doors, huh? Okay. It's male, female, whatever. Go in there, lay the deuce, and... The whole video went to shit as soon as I got here. I don't know. Maybe it's the emotion I was talking about. You know, I was talking about good emotions, bad emotions. Happy, sad, scared. You see an angry now. You know, this is me angry. I just go like, well, fuck it. I'm done. I'm packing up and going home taking the ball and the bat with me. Let me rephrase that. I'm taking the hat and the bat with me. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yep, like a fat lady. He doesn't know where her ass is. 